This thing is amazing. I have been waiting for one of these for so long. Hi, I'm Joe, and welcome to Motor City Boat Works. Let's get to work. This morning, we're on the road. We're driving about three and a half hours north of the Boat Works. We're going to Traverse City, Michigan. We're gonna be looking at a boat, a little sailboat. I'm breaking my own rule. Am I just buying another boat? Motor City Boat Works is my retirement boat shop. It's where I restore old sailboats, and now I'm working on a 1986 Alban 27 family cruiser. The boat we're going to look at is a 1981 Southern Sails Skipper 20. It's a 20-foot pocket sailboat. This trailerable sailboat, it weighs about 2,000 pounds. It has about 800 pounds of ballast. It's what's known as a character sailboat. Character meaning it has a lot of character, but also character boats are boats that kind of harken back to classic designs that have come up through history, boats that are kind of well-known to the eye. When you see one of these boats, you think, oh, that's a salty little boat. Well, that's a character boat. I said, this is awesome. I've been waiting for one of these so long, I'm so excited. I have been wanting one of these boats going on 10 years now. I first saw one 10 years ago on the side of the road in rural Kentucky. But in the back of my mind over the years, I've always been looking for one of these boats and several times I've come across them and always kind of talked myself out of buying one because I had the larger trawler to work on and it just wasn't the right time. I don't know if it's the right time now, but I definitely know that as I've gotten older, I've decided, you know, this is one of those things that I've always wanted, and I think it's time to at least get one and maybe park it in the boatyard. It satisfies my interest because I'm a sailor at heart. I just love working on little sailboats. The tires are only about eight inch, and we've got to go about 175 miles on the highway. So we're gonna have to go slow and uh, hopefully we won't have a problem. I think what we're gonna do is pick up a spare tire just in case we have a problem on the way home. If you've been watching the channel, you know that I sometimes give advice on how to make sure your boat restoration or amateur boat building project goes smoothly. One of my rules, in fact, one of the most important rules is to not lose momentum and not get distracted. Today, I think I'm gonna break one of those rules. <laughs> you know, as you get older in life, you know, there's always those rare things, those gems that you wanted to buy, but you never had the money or it was never the right time. And as you get older, you decide, hey, now's the time. I need to get one of these things before they all disappear. And I pulled the trigger and I bought this little sailboat. No one knows for sure, but I'm guessing between 1979 and 1982, there were probably less than 400 of the Skipper 20s ever made. Arguably, what makes this a character boat is probably the faux lapstrake hull. It's fiberglass, but it's made to look like one of those early wooden boats. It's got a little bowsprit and it's what's known as a double ender. It has a canoe stern, which is a rounded stern. It's not flat. It's a design feature that protects the boat against following seas when you're out on the ocean. Now, some people might not like this salty appearance, but that's why the original brochure proudly announced that this boat wasn't for everyone. The boat was made in Clearwater, Florida by Sovereign Sails. They had a number of successful sailboats that they made over the years until they finally went out of business. The Skipper 20 only draws about two feet. It's almost seven feet wide and it has a headroom of about four and a half feet. This is the type of little sailboat that you sail on your local lake, but you imagine you're crossing oceans. I've drug it back and I parked it in the boat yard next to the boat works and today I'm going to be going through it. We'll talk about my assessment of this boat, my ideas as a boat project and things that I'm looking at in the initial stages of basically unpacking and checking out the boat. Now an assessment is not to be confused with a survey. 
a survey is kind of like a home inspection, but it's for a boat. And usually you pay somebody who's certified, they've been trained in what to look for on various boats. Oftentimes you get a survey for insurance purposes or pre-purchase, something like that. What I'm going to be doing is just an assessment where I kind of just look over the boat and get an idea in my mind what it's going to take to take this boat to the next level or what exactly it is that I want to do with it. I'm going to be looking for several things. I want to kind of get an understanding of how complete the boat is, any big ticket items that need to be repaired or replaced. Are there going to be any major repair jobs going forward? I like to break my assessment for a sailboat down into several categories. I would like to start with the exterior of the hull. I like to look at the interior of the boat. I like to look at the mast and the rigging for the boat. I like to look at its propulsion system if there is one. And then of course the sails that might go with the boat. And then there's like a final category which is kind of like all the accessories and all the leftover stuff that comes with the boat anchors and safety gear and cushions all this other sort of stuff that generally is found in a sailboat i haven't actually been up inside the boat i've only seen pictures so it'll be exciting to see what we've got to work with down the road this will be a long-term project that i kind of set aside in the back of the boat yard and i want to think about it for a period of time try and come up with what is going to be my ultimate design my ambition for this boat I'm not quite sure whether I'm going to keep it kind of the way it is, turn it into some sort of pilot house motor sailor, or even go one step further and turn it into a salty little pocket trawler. I don't want it to distract from the Albin 27 that I'm working on inside the boat works, but at the same time, it's always great to have another project kind of in the background. When one project gets a little slow, you can do something else. And these things inherently take a very, very long time to kind of conceptualize and prepare for and to kind of work yourself up to actually actually doing the project. This small sailboat will be a fantastic project for those of you that are doing sailboat restorations. I'll kind of walk through my methodology, some of the processes that I use when I'm looking at restoring an old sailboat. I think you're gonna get a kick out of it and I hope you stick with me. If you've enjoyed this episode, do me a favor, hit the like button and leave a comment below. And I invite you to subscribe to the channel. Hey, don't take my word for it. Watch a couple episodes and see what you think. Your support makes this channel possible. Thank you. We'll talk about all these things down the road over a series of videos that'll happen way into the future. But for now, let's take a look and see what's going on inside my new purchase. The first thing I'm gonna tell you is that when you're climbing on top of your new sailboat, especially the small trailerable sailboats, you wanna make sure that the trailer is still hooked up to your tow vehicle. If you unhook the trailer and you climb on top of a small boat on one of these trailers, very likely it might shift and you may find yourself thrown out of the boat and onto the ground. Ask me how I know. So always make sure that you have a stable platform that you're climbing onto when you start doing your exploring on your new old boat. So the first step is to untie everything and kind of start getting the different components off of the boat so that I can open up the interior and see what's going on on the inside. And my initial assessment is that, first of all, the deck seems very, very solid. All the fiberglass looks really good. Very little crazing. It's very dirty. The non-skid's in great condition. No soft spots, no delamination. Everything seems very, very solid moving fore and aft on the boat. The next thing I'm noticing is that the rigging, it looks to be in pretty good shape, although it's old. There's some unusually large, oversized blocks on the mast they're a little bit too large for the mast they've been sized up by somebody and other components of the boat have not been sized up appropriately for example the chain plates they look original they're kind of a thin 1a 316 stainless steel chain plate these are slightly undersized and they've already uh, been bent the deck fittings generally look pretty good, although there's a mix of plastic, stainless steel, and possibly some other sort of alloy. It might even be steel because it looks like it's got some rust on it. The forward hatch and the companionway hatch, these are not original 
the previous owner fabricated these out of epoxy over plywood he actually did a very good job but they are not original you know the running rigging fittings these would be all the blocks and pulleys that are used for controlling the sails the main sail the jib all this stuff looks reasonably good this will it can easily be cleaned up and reused it may just have to be rebedded in a couple places the boom is a roller furling boom which is always a nice touch to have it means you can reef the mainsail without having to have reef points or a jiffy reef system in your mainsail it's very easy you just twist the boom and it tightens up the mainsail depending on how much you want it to reduce sail the skipper 20 has a engine well where you put an outboard down into the hull there's actually an opening that goes to the outside where the outboard sits huh so i'm not sure what we got going on in here it looks like someone sprayed some great stuff inside here and i'm not quite sure why they did that maybe as a form of sound deadening that may have been the solution to, to try and keep the engine from vibrating but you've got a little bit of water you got some water down in here this is wet this looks like great stuff i'll be honest with you it does not look like Although I tell you what, it's harder than great stuff. So maybe it's a two part flotation. This is all dry. There's no cracks here. All right. yeah. Not exactly sure why they did that, but this will be something we look at in the future. All the fiberglass looks like it's in really good condition and I really have no concerns about the hull. We're extremely lucky in that the boat came with a relatively new long shaft 3.5 horsepower mercury four-stroke outboard engine. It seems to be in great shape. We haven't fired it up yet, but I've been told that it runs and that everything is good to go. In the interior, we've got a full complement of gear, everything that you would need to take this boat sailing right now. We've got a mainsail, we've got a jib. They both look like they're original, but still in very good condition. It looks like the cushions are relatively new. They're in great shape. There's always detritus. When you're emptying out one of these old boats, you'll find everything from someone's old pillows, an old pair of underwear, a blanket, rolls of dried up paper towels, all sorts of garbage stuffed into every nook and cranny and you just got to get rid of all of that be sure to keep any lines any rope that comes with the boat especially if it's proper nautical synthetic line you can always clean it up later by washing it with a little laundry detergent and fabric softener this all looks pretty good going forward this headliner looks good seams are tight i mean if the portholes are not leaking then it's probably great the way it is i would just leave it all of the storage compartments down to the bilge are painted. This all looks amazing. No concerns there. This is the front here. There's some flotation inside here. Someone did that. Probably okay. And this is a DIY hatch previous owner made. Not bad. It fits perfectly. Very low tech. The mast step looks good but it's missing a set of companionway stairs. You can see to the back, everything is uh, sealed. So that's excellent. That's, a, that's very good news. Yeah, these are standard Bex and Porthills, real nice shape. Wow, look at that. So the question is, you know, what do you do with a boat like this in this condition? For a very low amount of effort, small amount of effort, you could probably restore this boat, you know, uh, put a coat of sealant on the wood, clean everything up, get it rigged, you know, so that it's ready to go, and uh, maybe even paint the non-skid on the deck, it'd probably look amazing. And uh, you've got a very shipley little boat that definitely would be holding its own, I think out there on the market, you know, for whatever they're worth. The, uh, but as you can see, sitting down below, you know, as a big guy, I have no headroom here. I'm actually hunched over. There's not enough space in here to sit upright, let alone if there were cushions inside here. There's, there's no cushions right now, so my head is right up against here. And to me, 
you know, it feels like this boat would benefit from some type of a pilot house, pilot house conversion or something. I, I'm not quite sure. This is not the first time that I've done a pilot house conversion on a small sailboat. If you haven't already seen it, be sure to check out my video where I explain how I added a pilot house to a compact 16 trailerable sailboat. You'd have to figure out what do you got what do you get for that? What what would it uh, mean? It, it might not be worth the effort to to do something like that. You have to see. There's quite a bit of work to be done on this boat just to kind of bring it back to life and then uh, you know have it ready for sales top dollar. So you know this might be this might be 400 hours you know just to get this boat sellable uh so obviously i bought it so it's sellable but top dollar you know i think first in class 400 400 hours to do that easily to add a pilot house that's another 400 hours in and of itself for the construction maybe faster since i already kind of have a methodology to go about doing it like I did on the compact 16 this would be a much better boat to do a pilot house on because there's quite a bit of room down here it's uh it's a very nice one person boat as a uh solo gentleman's boat this would be right up there it's very very cool and it seems to be constructed really really well I'm super happy the inside here this is all this is the pan liner and uh, it is super thick fiberglass and uh, just excellent quality. It's at least three eighths, uh, three sixteenths of an inch. It's very, very nice. Super gel coat finish. After all these years, it's 40 years old at least. And uh, the gel coat is just phenomenal. And I would say the same thing on the outside. Of course, it needs to be cleaned and maybe polished it may be oxidized and the pores have opened up but uh we won't know that till we get it really clean and kind of take a look at it very very nice super super pleased now the good thing about doing multiple boat projects is that over time you start to acquire miscellaneous parts you take them off of one boat and then you save them up over time and they're ready to go to be put on another boat so i've got quite a few pieces of various sailboats believe it or not i already have a fiberglass hardtop greg who's a local fan of the show well he donated an eight foot by six foot fiberglass hardtop that he was constructing for a project that he eventually moved on from well there you go i hope you're as excited about this project as i am the real question is do i leave the skipper 20 original maybe just clean it up or is it time to do another pilot house conversion a solo gentleman's motor sailor or maybe we throw everything out the window and do something that's really outside the box maybe it's time to do a 20 foot micro pocket trawler i'd be interested to hear what you think Leave a comment below, send me an email, or you can contact me on Instagram or on Facebook. If you're interested, check out the Compact 16 Pilot House conversion that I've already done. We'll see you next time. Stay motivated.